Hello, fellow safety and health pro, and welcome to another podcast in a long series of podcasts based on an article in Safety and Health Magazine that's all about you. Quality conversations are give and take affairs. When two or more people share their thoughts and emotions and listen attentively, the results can be impressive. Not only does it feel good to have a productive conversation, but as a safety and health pro, it's a vital tool to finding out what's going on in the field. And also, you got to do that to be able to instruct and coach, which can often be part of our job. Conversations can also help create strong bonds between people. You know, you're probably closest to the people you have the best conversations with. Uh, They can be delightful, instructive, and a pleasure to engage in, but they also can be damaging and hurtful. You know, get some some nasty arguments. I I try to avoid the latter. I don't like to do that. But sometimes it happens, and sometimes you can't even help it. Well, what does it take to be a welcomed and effective conversationalist where people like talking to you, they want to talk with you, even if... You consider yourself an introvert, where you don't get energized by having conversations with people. Unlike me, I'm definitely an extrovert. Um, I just like so much to talk with people. Neither one is better than the other. But you could still be a good conversationalist, even if you are somewhat introverted and would rather be with yourself a lot of the times, that type thing. You still can. There's some skills you can develop that will make you a good conversationalist. A brilliant one, actually, eventually. So, what does it take to do that? Here's what I find works. Number one, genuine interest. Now, this can be tough. It's like asking someone to act naturally. Because you're acting, the natural part is tricky. Just like if you're saying, you know, have genuine interest. How do you force that? Well, you really can't force it right away. But what you can do with practice, like any skill, you can mold your intent. You can gradually get it so that you are genuinely interested in what the other person says. And I say that to myself. Even I say, like, you know, somebody's talking to me and I really am not interested in this subject. But really, learn from it. Pay attention to them. And eventually, you do become genuinely interested in what other people say in general. Now, John Powell, he was, uh, he's an, he is an animated film composer, and he does stuff for, I think, Pixar and Disney. He really put it succinctly. I like this a lot. Communication works for those who work at it. So you got to purposely work at being a better communicator. And I've said this so many times in these articles and other times in my talks and seminars. Now, when you do talk, Don't just talk about yourself or your experiences. That's important. When someone describes something, ask questions about it or further it. For example, if if you said to me, I had a bad day today at work, I wouldn't say, yeah, you know, I have had bad days at work. Yeah, I had a bad day too. No, 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 no. I'd ask you why you had a bad day at work. What happened? What caused it? You know, whatever, whatever comes to my mind, but it's still about what you just said. Now, after a bit, I may steer the conversation in a different direction, or I might even talk something about me, but I make sure that you had a chance to flesh out what you said because I furthered your conversation or your thoughts. Second, attentive signals. You can nod your head and say, "Uh uh-huh, uh-huh, as a reply to almost anything anyone says. Now, I demonstrate this during my Keeping Your Safety Team Alive seminar. I love it. It's so much fun. It gets a lot of laughs. That's one reason I like it. So what I do is I bring two attendees up to the front of the room. I have one person put on this goofy mask I have uh, with big teeth hanging out. You look really stupid with it. Funny. And then you have uh, glasses that make your eyes look goofy, too. And that person, all they do is just nod up and down, up and down, up and down, and say, "Uh uh uh-huh, 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 uh-huh. And the other person, I give them a script, give them a sheet of paper, 
with some things to say to the person who was doing uh huh, uh huh. And I mean, stuff like, I just won the lottery. My dog died today. Can I borrow your car? Do you know you look silly wearing that mask? And what's funny about it is no matter what you say, you know, you can always go, uh huh, uh huh, and nod your head. And it's appropriate, I guess is the right word, but it doesn't mean you're listening. You know, you could do, I, my sister used to call me on the phone and talk and talk. I loved my sister dearly, but I would still keep at some point often I would say, uh huh, uh huh. And I really wasn't listening to what she was saying. So, same thing with this. Now, what's better than that? You know, why do I do that skit? Well, I do it to show that point that, uh huh, nod your head. You can say that, do that no matter what a person says. But what's better is to do things that show you at least understand the mood or the generality of what the person is saying without interrupting them. Make facial gestures and give verbal cues that show you're listening and at least understand the general meaning of what the person is talking about and without interrupting them. Or you could say things like, wow, you know, oh, good for you, you know, and display facial expressions. If somebody did tell you they won the lottery, you're, you're widen your eyes and go, whoa, ah. if they tell you their dog died, then squint a little bit like you're in this minor pain, like, oh, that's a shame type thing. Third thing, have measured give and take. So, so how much should you talk and how much should you listen? There is no set formula for that. It all depends on the situation. A example, uh, if, if, Carpenters are building this scaffold, and it's tough. You know, there's some difficulties to do it safely even. You'd want to ask questions and then listen a lot. Find out what is going on. And, of course, you're going to eventually maybe give advice or, you know, go back. But you want to listen a lot then, right, a lot more than even usual. Now, let's say you're with a friend at dinner. You know, you just haven't seen him for a while. Who knows? You know, it's still going to be back and forth. But the stuff I said earlier still applies. If they tell you about something that's happened in their life, don't just tell them something that happened in your life. Ask some questions about that. Further their ideas and thoughts. And then, sure, talk about yourself. Now, humans love to communicate. Uh, so social media has reduced in-person conversations for sure, in many cultures, not all of them, and yet it still abounds. But to do it well, you must work at it. And be ready to give and take. I like to compare it to playing ping pong, which I like to play ping pong. The game would be senseless and tedious. If every time you volley the ball, you hit the ball over to the other person, they let it go. They ignored it. It would be a stupid game then, and it wouldn't work. And that's what can happen with conversations, where when somebody sends you a volley, you ignore it and just say your stuff. So whether with our family, friends, colleagues, or strangers, sharing a conversation can be a dynamic way to improve the quality of your relationships with people, but also it can increase your influence as a safety and health, health pro.